Hi, I'm Pete and this is Mike, we're from Patrol Base. Welcome to the next video in our series geared towards beginner airsofters. Today, we're looking at the real interesting stuff, gas. Although there are many variants of uh, propellant for airsoft guns, they all fall under three main categories. CO2, HPA and green gas, or propane. Now, if you're thinking about getting yourself a CO2 powered weapon, chances are it's going to be powered by a CO2 bulb. Now, these are usually inserted into the bottom of the magazine or into the pistol grip and are screwed into the gun until the top of the cartridge is pierced, therefore releasing the CO2. CO2 is usually favoured during the colder months of the year because it's less affected by temperature. But just bear in mind that if you try and use it in the hot months of the year, it could actually produce more power in the gun than your game site will allow. One of the things to look out for when using CO2 bulbs is to make sure that it pierces completely when inserting it into the mag and also make sure you don't over tighten it otherwise you could cause damage to the valve. You also need to make sure that the bulb's fully empty before trying to take it out of the magazine otherwise you'll have yourself a homemade CO2 launcher. Another type of gas is HPA which stands for high pressure air. Now these types of guns are usually powered by a pressurized bottle which is fed into a regulator which controls the amount of air or gas escaping from the bottle in a very consistent manner uh, and then that feeds into the rifle which then pushes the BB out through the barrel. It's a very consistent system uh, and is less affected if at all by temperature which means you can run it pretty much all year round. The only disadvantage is you might be carrying a big bottle around with you at the same time. Typically, as a beginner, you probably won't encounter this kind of system unless it's other guys at the field. Um, generally, it's either a gas rifle that's been modified to accept a remote line or an out-of-the-box solution such as a Tipman M4 or Polar Star, to name a few. Now, onto the slightly more complicated topic of green gas. Now, whilst these are available in various different varieties, they are essentially just propane with different amounts of silicon lube or other additives in there to vary the power output. Green gas guns typically store the gas in the magazines and can be easily filled simply by depressing the can's nozzle into the fill valve on the base of the magazine. It's very easy to do and the gas itself is very easy to store as you can see in these cans here. Green gas magazines can also be topped up at any time making them very very easy to use. However, they are easily affected by temperature. Too weak a gas in lower temperatures could render it completely unusable, whereas if you're using a more powerful gas in warmer temperatures, it could render it far too powerful for most game sites. As it can be so confusing, we've put together a couple of examples just to help guide you through it. Spoiler alert, 99% of the time, you're going to be using Newpol 2.0 or ASG Ultra. As you can see, there's a wide variety of gases available and they all offer something slightly different. So starting from weakest to strongest, we have 144A, or summer gas as it's generally known, your typical green gas, and then we move on to slightly more powerful red gas, and then on to the even more powerful again, black gas. The lower power gases are most likely to be used with polymer slided pistols like Tokyo Marui, or if you've got a gas gun which is running too hot to be used at your site, it can help you bring down the power somewhat. Moving on to the green gas, 95% of the time that's what you're going to be using and we blanket recommend that for pretty much every gas pistol and rifle we sell. On from there you've got the red gas which is a little bit more powerful again and is generally used for lower temperatures however it is missing that silicon lubricant component so just bear that in mind. Moving on from that we go all the way up to the black gas with the super power up gas uh, which is most likely to be used in the coldest temperatures or if you've got a gas rifle with a particularly heavy bolt or something like that in there just to help it cycle properly and it's also the most common gas used in competition shooting where power output is less of an issue. One thing to note if you are new to the world of airsoft gases is that the colour of the can doesn't always denote what's in the can. So the 144A down there is in a green can, it's not green gas though, that's for summer. This Predator Ultra over here that's not a red power-up gas, that's actually a standard green gas. Newprol 4.0 is another exception as well. That's not a black power-up gas in the way that Garda Black is. This is actually formulated for large magazines, so if you've got an M4 gas blowback, that'll be what you want to use. And now for the most powerful, pure propane. This is exactly the same stuff that you use in barbecues and portable cookers, but with a special adapter to allow you to fill gas magazines via the valve. 
It's the base of what makes up your standard airsoft green gases, except it doesn't have any lubricant in it, so users need to add their own from the neck of the bottle. If you are looking at using pure propane in your pistol or rifle, then just bear in mind that you're going to need to spend more time lubricating the internals. Just pay a bit more attention to that uh, as it does run very dry, but that's your trade-off for more power and consistency in colder weathers. So there you have it guys, that's our beginner's guide to the various gases available for airsoft replicas. Hopefully it's provided you a bit more information and busted some of those myths that may surround the, uh, the genre. Remember, 99% of you are going to be using standard green gas anyway, but if you did want to switch it up, if you want to try a, a less powerful gas in your polymer slide pistol, for example, then hopefully we've provided you enough information to know what to go for. This has been another instalment in our beginner's guide to airsoft. Uh, remember to check back again in the future for the next instalment. But until then, see you later.